Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome viewers to MOOC's online course on the modern Indian art from the colonial period to the present. This is the third lecture from the first week and today we are going to discuss a very interesting phase from the early modern Indian art and it is called company painting. Now the word company painting might misleadingly refer to the art that was produced by the East India Company. But we know that it is not. It is a new genre in Indian art. And not only that, despite the fact that company painting was actually sponsored by or patronized by the British East India Company, the art that this company painters produced who were primarily Indian artists. They stylistically and in terms of sensibility claim a very important position in the early history of modern Indian art. The question is how and why? This is what we are going to discuss today. Now, if we are to introduce company paintings, if we have to define company paintings in words, how do you go about it? It's simple, fairly simple. You have to keep in your mind the arrival of Europeans once again during the 18th century who were fascinated by the environment and they wanted some Indian painters who could actually truly respond to the Indian ethos, cultural, social, natural ethos. Wanted those Indian painters to paint the Indian subject matters, the real life Indian subject matters. No more mythological, no more imaginative, no more even from religion. But all the company paintings in terms of the subject matter are going to address the actual real life situations, events, phenomena, characters of Indian subjects. Sometimes you do find once in a while the presence of some one or two stray British characters, but that's rare. Mostly, and by and large, all the company paintings depict Indian subject matters. And it happened during 18th and 19th century. From mid 18th till mid 19th century, you get to see some very interesting developments happening in the visual art field of India. Some centers like Calcutta, Mushidabad, Patna, Madras, Delhi, emerging as new centers for these company paintings. So, primarily you find that manners and customs of India record and to record the scenes of monuments, deities, festivals and occupations. That was why the British employed Indian artists here to do the company paintings. Now, this is one painting which very symbolically define or state the claim and the power of the British Empire over India. Now, this is also true that it was just not the matter of fascination only. When we say that the British rulers were fascinated by the Indian climate, the Indian society, Indian religion, etc. And that is why they undertook this project. They asked the Indian painters to paint company paintings. Okay, partly true, but not wholly. Because it's very important to realize that these new rulers who colonized India wanted to document their subjects, their native land, the native people, the native culture as part of their agenda. So company painting or getting these paintings done under this category called company painting by the Indian painters to paint Indian subject matter was also in a way to document the newly occupied, newly colonized 
country of India. So real life documentation or visual recording, I think was one of the main motivations behind the company paintings. Now the next important problem that these company painters had to solve was to develop a suitable visual style to do this subject matters, to do justice to the subject matters. Now we must remember many of these painters hailed from traditional painting family or painters families. If not they themselves but their forefathers did work in traditional courts of royal families where these forefathers used to do some paintings. And these company painters naturally they inherited some of those sensibilities that primarily belong to those traditional painting schools. So they did carry some indigenous mood, some local sensibilities. They did carry something that was truly Indian in ethos. But along with that, they also brought in naturalistic flavor derived from the Western academic art, which was by then all around. It was everywhere in India. So it was not at all impossible that these company period painters, they actually, they were exposed. They could see some real examples of Western academic art and they felt the necessity to adopt them to some extent. And this necessity was partly, was also made to feel by the patrons, that is the British rulers. So as a result, what we see is a hybrid style. A completely hybrid style developed during this period under the company paintings. Now, it is true that there was a severe disruption of the traditional art forms, as we discussed in our last lectures, due to the advent of the British rule. But it is also true that new art forms developed as a result. So there was a consequence of that disruption. Now, although the company paintings may still look archaic compared to many of the standards set by the later examples of modern Indian art, but you should consider them as some of the earliest examples of art, modern art in the colonial India and therefore company paintings do demand a very thorough study on our part and that apart, that is apart from its historical reasons. These paintings by themselves are no less fascinating. Now, as you can already see in these images that we have just seen, that the subject matters have got nothing to do with anything mythological or religious. The subject matters are clearly and evidently derived from everyday life, from the Indian social and cultural uh, and even economic activities. These are all professionals in various fields and they are doing their job. So in a way these paintings are documents, visual documents of these professional people. So there was a Hindu tailor, there was somebody who is making ropes, there will be somebody who will be making baskets. So you have picture of basket weavers coming up next. Now one important aspect that I must draw your attention to right now is Whereas on the right hand painting you see that the tailor is made to sit, is drawn in a way that he is seated in a place which has a background, possibly a wall like thing. Whereas the painting on the left hand side has a completely blank or I would say a neutral background. And this is quite a recurrent feature in many company paintings where background is completely blank or neutral or anonymous or without any specific identity. Yes, so in company paintings you see Indian people from different walks of life, the labor class, the working people, the professionals who are experts in particular job, for example the basket weavers, the basket makers in the painting in the middle, then also this kind of uh, moments where uh, uh, an Indian woman meets an Indian man who seems to be a religious figure in the sense a pilgrim or a devout religious follower and probably 
the woman is trying to give him some alms or the traveling musicians who were quite common in colonial india in 19th century india here you see them being depicted but once again though you can see their dress their costumes their activities even their look their gaze their ornament jewelry in somewhat accurate details but you do not have any clue regarding their background regarding their location where exactly they are standing you can even see shadow yet you don't know anything about the background so this is something strange that you find occurring again and again in company painting so company paintings are mostly on paper and sometimes on ivory especially those from delhi so they were mostly intended to be kept in portfolios or albums and the style developed in the second half of 18th century and by the early 19th century the number of productions increased to a considerable level there were company paintings everywhere as the number of productions increased so was the number of artists as a result both very talented and skilled artists were joined by inferior artists as well consequently the quality of the company paintings varied depending on who did the painting and artists even had to start workshops to meet huge demand and set up shops to sell them it was a very lucrative profession in 19th century until the camera intervened and gradually overtook the task of documenting real life delegated to company paintings initially now let us look at some of these examples from the company painting let us not miss out on this fact that how meticulously the painter here is trying to create a sense of depth and space using perspective perspective was hardly used in traditional indian painting but the company painters are trying to use them trying to create a sense of perspective but they are yet to arrange and place the human figures convincingly i mean there is a lack of air or distance between the different human beings they seem to be piled one upon the other even anatomically there might be some errors but that is what company painting is all about it's not perfect but the imperfection actually becomes a very interesting and a fascinating aspect to look at here of course you see these uh, people who seem to be like security guards very strong young men they have been depicted with a meticulous accuracy and artist or the painter certainly has pay great attention to the details but again the problem remains where they are standing what is the context what is the background nothing is shown here so this neutrality of the background becomes a hallmark for many company paintings from this century late 18th and mainly 19th century sometimes right the painting on the right hand side maybe in the horizon there is a slight indication suggestion of some background but otherwise the space is left very neutral very blank so different kind of professions and the depictions of these professions in a particular way whether it is about somebody who takes care of horses or a man smoking hookah or somebody like this like a group of women engaged with some regular life activity domestic activity pounding some grain maybe or some wood cutter maybe carpenters now it's very very interesting that how now the indian painters are paying attention in their paintings to all these details of indian life and thanks to the british patrons it is because they wanted that this life should be documented that this is happening now there are examples like this for example 
This picture of a weaver, an old weaver, seated at his loom, where the space is clearly described. That there is a small hut, a thatched roof, there is a window through which you can see outside, the objects placed in front of him. So, there are examples where the background is not neutral, like this one. Again, palanquin and the palanquin bearers. We just do not have any idea where they are going, through which road they are going, what is the background. Of course, this lack of this background description um, is slightly, could be slightly disturbing to us because we don't get the clue of their location and also we don't have any narrative clue. We really don't know the story of these people. But on the other hand, they are almost like very objective documentation, visual documentation of different people engaged with different professions, where you do not want to make anything narrative about them. Straightforward, you want to simply show them associated with their specific profession. And there are many such examples here. For example, vegetable, fruit and grocery sellers in a market. And what is interesting about this painting, which you can already see, that both the sellers and the customers are all women. So this is also a very important glimpse at a social reality of 19th century, which you may not find anywhere else but in company paintings. So that is why, beside our fascination for company painting styles and all, company paintings are very important documents for the historians, for the anthropologists, for the cultural historians and etc. Because for them, when there is no photograph, they can at least depend on these visual documentations and not only of people and places but also of birds and animals like this. In fact, this meticulous detailing of birds and animals come from the legacy of Indian Mughal painting. If you have seen any example of Mughal painting describing an animal or a bird, you would know what I am talking about. You can easily connect that these company period painters were actually greatly indebted to their predecessors in the Mughal painting tradition because this meticulousness of depicting the details of birds and animals comes not from the Western academic realism but from the Indian and specifically Mughal painting. So, when you look at a simple painting like this, this common Indian night jar, you can see that the bird is executed with a great attention to detail. Individual feathers have been outlined and painted with subtle gradations of color and several shades of brown and black are also used to delineate its body markings. The eye has a bright ring around it and the legs are textured with parallel line markings. So, so much to see. If you look at the details of this bird. Now, let me at this point say or at least mention some of the important centers of company painting, which were like Calcutta, Murshidabad, Patna, Lucknow, Delhi, Madras, and Tanjore. Then we also have names of some well-known famous company paintings with the artists from company paintings like Sevak Ram who was working in Patna, Mazhar Ali Khan and Gulam Ali Khan working in Delhi, Deep Chand working in Mushidabad. So when you say this particular artist or these artists working in one place, it means that place by then had emerged as a center for company paintings because there were people, mainly the British patrons, who were patronizing. And once they collected a bunch of paintings, they would create an album. And that is how we 
have this famous Fraser's album in company painting comprising the paintings that Fraser patronized and he got done by the Indian painters. So we find most of these company paintings in an album. But now of course they are dispersed. You find them in many museums and all and in different collections. Now around this time something very significant happens worldwide and India was also not out of it. You all know around 1840 photography started its journey. Camera was invented and photography started its journey all over the world including India. Very soon camera was found to be at the hands of Indian photographers like Lala Dindal and many others. They went on clicking photographs of Indian life, Indian subject matters, just the way the company painters were doing. This is very interesting. And not only photographs of landlords and Raja and kings, but also these professional people, exactly the way the company painters were doing. Or large scenarios or some events. And that is why we often have a hunch that the arrival of photography and gradual spread of photography, well, was that the reason, at least partly, for the decline of company painting? Because when you see this kind of photographs, this is impossible to deny that photography was gradually or tending to gradually replace company painting. So photography or the advent of camera has often been cited as one of the main reasons behind the gradual disappearance of company painting. Now, at the same time, it is also true that around mid 19th century, Several art colleges were established across the country to produce well-trained and skilled professional artists to serve the demands of the British rulers and administrators. In fact, we have evidences to say that artists or students from the artist family, traditional artist family or company, painters family also joined this newly founded art schools in Calcutta, Madras, Bombay. An arrival of printing technology like lithography, woodcut, etching also created a kind of competition. So hand-painted company paintings almost failed to compete with the technologically produced and reproduced paintings or prints of the same subject matters. So it is only natural, it was only a matter of time that company painting would lose the business and it would become very out of debt. But the genre continued in different formats, in different techniques and mainly in printing and photography. However, other forms of hand painted artworks were alive for a long time. Kali Ghat painting was one of them. And this is something that we shall discuss in our next lecture. So our next lecture will be on Kaligat painting. Thank you.